Hello, everyone. We are the, the Nobodies. Nobodies. What are we doing here today? Today, we are going to be interviewing a band called Gone in April. We got two members of the band, Joy and Yannick. We listened to uh, them a few weeks ago with their song as Hope Welcomes Death. And if you didn't notice, we were a bit very big fans of them. Yes, and we contacted them through Facebook and they replied. And here we sit today and we're about to give them an interview and ask them a whole bunch of questions. And we hope that you join us and ask a whole bunch of questions also. All right, so... Let's get right into this. I'm son. And I'm father. Our future line. Yeah, we can stop it right now. Okay. Wow. Once again. I'm not sure if uh, you noticed this, but this band meshes so freaking well together. Yes. Um, the one thing I noticed right away was once again, Steve the bassist, amazing work, fretless bass, his fingers are all over the place. The drummer, Yannick, who we're going to talk to, He's just ridiculous. Like, he's just we, ridiculous. Freaking, he has so many pieces on his drum set, as you saw in the our last reaction. We don't know how many pieces are on there. Well, maybe he'll answer that today. Both of us guessed about 20. Wow, that's a lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Alright, stop it for a second. I'm trying to understand the video, and I hope I'm correct, and uh, they, I'm sure they'll answer this later. I'm thinking that that voodoo-looking guy is the kid's mind. Hmm. Because the father, if that's the father or whoever it is, is just a bully. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the kid, you could just see, it's like everything he does is wrong, and the guy's out there, he's making him freaking work like crazy, he's just... He's just a miserable guy, and he's treating the kid like crap. And I, and every time they show the kid, they end up showing the voodoo guy. And I think his mind's going, uh, you know. I'm, you know, now that you've said that, I'm thinking the voodoo guy might be a more, like, kind of a vision of how he sees his father. Okay. Like, right here in this part of the video, it just shows his dad grabbing him. But I feel like in, like, a second, we're going to see that monsterish thing grabbing him. Okay, let's see. Like, if I'm right. Okay, never mind. Oh, no. 
told you. This freaking brain. Oh. Okay, I, the singer, well, the operist, Julie, yeah. and beautiful voice. the growler yeah. work so freaking well together. I was just sitting there, I was like, everybody's working so well together, and it, you know the thing that gets me is that there's so much talent in this band that one has to compete with the other. It's like, the drum is so good that the bass has got to keep up with the drummer, but the basses are so good, the guitar has got to keep up with the basses. Mm -hmm. and, and, and vice versa, all the way around. And, and, they, and that's what makes the complete circle. I wonder, when they're trying out members, or trying out whoever they were going to try out for the band, how long it took to find them, and how long was the line down the block, and they were just like, next, mm -hmm. next, Next, like, cause that talent is so freaking hard to find. Yeah, um, this whole song you hear that it's like the uh, Julie and the Growler are literally finishing each other's sentences. Yes, the whole time with yes. a different form of singing, and it's great. Yes, Four Wheel Drive Nation says hello, guys. What's up, what man? So, we are going to, this time, Skype them. This is a whole new method we're trying out. Yeah, hopefully it works. Yeah, hopefully it works. Disclaimer, there's the chance it can't, but I think it will go well. So, one second. Oh my god. Yes. What is up? Hello, guys. How are we, you? Good. We have you on uh, Skype right now, live. So. Yeah, we're... we just got. Uh, how you doing? We just got finished uh, watching your uh, video. It was uh, once again. I I can't tell you how many times I'll say. It. He says I'm your biggest fan. You know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> definitely amazing video. Definitely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously. Yes, so uh, we have a whole bunch of questions for you. And uh, we hope you have answers. All right. All right, so uh, I, first question we will ask is, uh, how did the band form? Uh, yeah, the band formed uh, back in 2009. Uh, Felix, the guitarist at the time, had contacted me. Uh, I had done two albums with him uh, previous to uh, the Gone in April project, and he said, hey, I got another uh, project I want to work on. Um, I want to start a new band, and I want you to play drums for it. And, um, you know, when I listened to the music, I thought, hey, it'd be good to get some, uh, some clean vocals uh, on this. And, uh, you know, contacted Julie, and uh, she joined the group, and I guess that's how uh, kind of everything got started. We released our first album in 2011, so to me, I see that 2011 was really the start of the, uh, the band when we released our first album. Okay. We were sitting there saying during the video that, uh, you know, there's so much talent in this band that when you guys <laughs> try out members... How many people, like, did you literally just turn away? Like, nope, you suck. You suck. See you later. <laughs> nope, nope. It's got to be so hard to find people with that talent. 
Well, we we pick the people that we choose to work with, um, you know. So to me, um, I'm a fan of the musicians that are in our own uh, group, uh, right? So uh, when we're looking for people, I, you know, um, I have high respect for every musician that's in this band. So it's not really a matter of auditioning. It's more a matter of, you know, finding the people that are a good match for us. And then once we find them, we, we work with them. So yeah. What Yannick doesn't say is that he already had at least, what, 15 years uh, on the metal scene already before joining Gone in April. So he already had a lot of contacts. So that helped yes. us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, we met, we met musicians throughout the years. And when you meet the right people, you know, you hear their stuff, you're like, yeah, that, that's what Oh, okay. Me. So you basically have done research before you even chose. Like, this is a, an internet-made band, I guess, per se. Like, lots of YouTube research and, and um, you, you know well, these people. Yeah, so Mark, uh, I had worked with them for, um, I've been working with Mark for probably about 10 years now. Um, I think it started in 2006 or 2007 uh, with another band, uh, which we were in together. And uh, Mark is uh, very talented, so when it came to writing the uh, the second album, I thought, hey, let's get uh, you know Mark on board. And uh, again, Mark's an incredible uh, guitarist. And uh, when it came to completing the lineup for the second album, um, I'm a big fan of Steve's uh, bass playing. I had done a few albums with him in the past, and uh, I was talking to Julie, and I, I said I would really like to have fretless uh, bass on this album. So yeah. uh, I texted uh, Steve, and uh, next thing we knew, he was uh, flying uh, here from uh, from California to uh, record bass for the album and do the video. So yeah, that's how uh, that's how things happen. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You nice. got a question? So uh, where is each member of the band from? So we um, we are three Canadians. <laughs> Ooh, Canadians. <laughs> so uh, Marc Andre still lives in uh, Quebec, in Canada. Uh, Yannick and I are both also from the province of Quebec, in Canada, but we live right now in Tennessee. And um, Steve lives in California, but I think he probably lives more on this touring bus right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's with Testament, right? Yes. Um, and Aaron also lives in Tennessee. Um, now, do you speak French? Yes, <laughs> okay. me. We, we. <laughs> Actually, it's our first, uh, our, our first language, Julie and I and Mark. So often when we're on tour, we work together. Uh, we speak French a lot. So there's, I guess, two main languages in, in the group. There's French and, and English. So <laughs> was, it, yeah. was it hard learning English, I'd assume? Well, we learned it at school, so I think I think we start at ten years old. So, we so it's, it's a, like a natural language. When you practice it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. We don't necessarily, you know, enjoy learning a new language, so that's different. But I think both. Yeah, in Canada, there's uh, both English and French a lot. I mean, Quebec is, uh, I would say, they're probably primarily uh, French uh, speaking. Uh, but there's a lot of English neighborhoods, so you're you're always in a mixed environment, and a, a lot of people in Quebec and in Canada are uh, bilingual. So okay, and now do you um do you have an album or anything in French? Do you have any songs in French, or is it all English? Well, I am part of uh, a band called Les Bâtards du Nord, which is the Bastards of the North. It's a Viking folk. Huh. Uh, project and all the all the lyrics are in French, so if you guys are now, I have to listen to it. Yes, <laughs> send me send me a link when you have a chance, please. There's actually a, a song on the second album that yes. has some uh, some French lyrics um, that Julie wrote. That um, is true. I mixed and matched a little bit, uh, so you find um, so on the ballad on the second album, you will find both uh, French and English mixed together. Hmm. Nice, very nice. Uh, how did you come up with the name Gone in April? So the concept of the first album is actually um, we are following a crusader leaving for the crusades. And we are kind of, as we follow him through his journey, we are actually also following whatever, whatever is happening in his head, uh, what he's thinking. And he always writes everything in a journal. And the last entry in his journal is the last day of April. So that's where we got that idea. Very, very nice. Um, do you, um, 
I noticed in the video that you guys um, were working on cliffs and everything. Is that uh is that part of uh what part of the America is that? Where yeah, where that, was the video that, made? Yeah, that was actually in uh, state parks in uh, Tennessee. Um, one was called Ozone Falls. That's about an hour drive from uh, from Knoxville. And uh, the other one was called Cold Bits Cove. That is uh, an hour and a half uh, about from where we live. So, of course, we had uh, Mark and Steve uh, travel to uh, to Knoxville, and Aaron's already here with uh, Julie and I. So uh, we had a, a little bit of uh, driving for that one. Um, we had a, a lot of people working on this uh, video. Uh, Thomas Mordvite, um, who has done uh, all of our video clips for the second album, has done an incredible job on it. Um, he is from Norway, so we flew him in from Norway uh, to Tennessee, so he came to film that. And we had a, a team of a lot of people that were helping and participating, uh, flying the uh, drone, uh, who's uh, one of my friends that um, was flying the drone there uh, at the waterfalls to get the uh, shots from above. So, yeah, we had... Everybody uh, in costume yeah. also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was a great video. I love the landscape and... Uh, yeah. It, it it was great. Um, so so um, I, we got uh, a question. Go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, that video, what I was I was like trying to figure out like what the story of the video was. I saw a lot with like the son and the father and like the voodoo demons thing. What was that? Yeah. Oh so, yes, we we yeah. both had different theories. I want to know who was right. Well, you know that's the good thing. We wanted to leave it kind of open at the same time, so. That's kind of a good thing. I'm glad you both had yeah. your own theory. Yes. <laughs> when, when we wrote it, the original idea was, uh, and we actually video recorded this, but we didn't keep that part of it, is that there's a tragedy in the boy's uh, family, and uh, the sheriff brings him to his legal guardian, and it's actually the guardian that we see there with uh, the boy. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the, you know, there's an unbalance between the two, and these um, wardens with the uh, claws, they're there to keep balance in, uh, in nature. And they sense an unbalance between the uh, guardian and the boy. And actually in the lyrics in the chorus, it's we rise, unite as one, the time has come, the war begins, the worlds collide, we form our future line. So the whole thing about that is that the wardens are there to encourage the boy to do something. He's not happy. And the wardens are there to encourage him to free himself. And the boy gets more and more courage and decides to do something uh, and, and make a change in his life. And that impacts the rest of his life. So that's where the uh, title track, uh, the title, uh, Our Future Line comes from. Okay. Is, your life is in your own hands. So if you're not unhappy, make some changes and that will impact your life. Okay. So what I said was it was the son's brain. Sort of like that. Yeah, it, I mean, it could be like, that as well. To me, right? it was it was his like that guy was his thinking process, like that, the, like you said, he was feeding the kid's brain. Yeah. So I yeah. win. I win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, I had a theory for like one second that like the claw guys were kind of uh, how the son saw the father, but then the claws were attacking the father, and my theory went right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah well that was what was good about watching the video we learned uh we got a four-wheel drive nation says that he loves your drumming oh well cool well thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> all right well we um we got more questions uh next up uh what inspired you to become a goth metal band well um so every musician brings his own baggage, his own uh, inspiration. So the way we usually compose, it's kind of funny. Um, Yannick will will start writing some drumming, or I'll start with some some melodies, uh, some la la las here and there. <laughs> so we send it to Mark after that, and uh, he adds amazing guitars on it. Once the, that core is done, we usually send it. Um, we have Aaron adding his growls, and we also have uh, Steve flying in and recording his bass that he writes on the spot. So what is kind of cool is that we all come from different backgrounds. So I'm from a very classical background. I studied, um, did my um, 
my master's in viola, my master's in opera. So for me, like I've been playing in symphonies and and uh, operas. So that's really my background. But I love metal, <laughs> so I, I really wrong. wanted to join that. that. And um, so if you look, uh, Marc Andre has a very um, diverse background as well. I think he just finished his master's, I think, in, uh, in jazz. And um, and he also plays a lot of progressive music, um, so lots of metal as well. He, he can do everything. Uh, Yannick comes from uh, more like the death metal uh, genre. Um, very heavy, uh, fast. As, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was sitting there saying you. Heard, I was sitting there saying I think you fell out the womb with sticks, right? <laughs> I I really do believe that. I think you were born to be a drummer. <laughs> so if we look at Aaron, he was uh, doing some metal core, um, and uh, Steve, well, he was uh, he's with Testament right now. He was uh, with Death. Um, uh, he played with Ice Earth as well. Uh, which one am I? Yeah. I, I mean, he plays in so many projects. Yeah, so I think we don't... We don't He's good. We write music. We, we're not aiming for a particular style. It's just everyone brings, um, you know, um, his or her own piece to the table. And with their background, that's what... That's the result that we get. So we're, we're not necessarily aiming for something, but that's the result of getting everyone's backgrounds, uh, you know, mixed in the same pot. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, your drum set, we were talking about it. How many pieces is on your drum set? Yes. <laughs> uh, there are uh, eight drums and ten cymbals. Um, so there's two bass drums, a snare, four toms, and a floor tom, and uh, uh, a few uh, crashes and effect cymbals in, the, in that. So uh, bringing um, the drums to waterfalls when oh, yeah. it's uh, a two, a two, <laughs> hike in the woods with cliffs uh, becomes very interesting <laughs> we actually had to get the uh, drum kit uh, in a cargo net actually uh, uh, one of my friends who was on the uh, cruise said hey I, I think it would make the uh, uh, you know the walk to the uh, bottom of the waterfall easier if we put the drums in this big cargo net and uh, with a rope and pulley system we can let them go <laughs> no shit so, uh, we had <laughs> A very pricey drum kit going down a cliff with a lot of electronics. And, wow. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Listen, That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now, so, so you use every piece, everywhere, every show. It's, you don't... Yes. That's crazy. So, you yeah. don't say, you don't go, okay, I'm going to go here, so I'll only bring five pieces. You, you, yeah, you, yeah. you take it all. Yeah, the material is written uh, with that drum kit in mind, right? So when I write drums, I know which pieces I have on my uh, on my drum kit, and I write for that. So taking a piece away would change the uh, the overall uh, composition or the fills and, and stuff like that. So luckily, uh, Aaron, uh, who is our uh, our other vocalist, um, uh, since he doesn't have an actual instrument, you know, a guitar, an amp, or a violin, or a bass, or whatever. Uh, he helps a lot with the uh, drum, so I'm very um, uh, thankful and grateful of all his help because it is a lot to set up. <laughs> but, you know, now that you say that, one day I think I'll just hide a tom somewhere and say, oh. <laughs> 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 just Well, you're only, you're only screwing yourself if you do that. <laughs> the song will change. <laughs> Oh, just, just as a joke to see his reaction, you know. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I can only imagine that reaction. I can... <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, what um, what age did you guys start playing, and uh, what inspired you? Was it your parents? Was it school, movies, cartoons? What inspired you to get into the instruments you play? Um, I start actually the first instrument that I played, believe it or not, was organ. Um, I took three years of organ when I was, I think, five, six, uh, four, five, and six years old, like around that age. Um, and, uh, that's, I mean, it, it's just a lot of kids, uh, at, at those ages either start with piano or organ. And, uh, for some reason, uh, you know, my parents decided it was going to be organ rather than piano. Uh, but I started playing drums at 14, uh, years old. Um, it just felt right for some reason when I was watching, uh, videos, um, of some of my favorite bands and I was watching the drummer and I would try to mimic the movements. Um, it just seemed natural in terms of playing and having the coordination between the hands and feet. 
it, it just felt like it was working. So when I got my first drum kit, um, I think I, I, I might not have started right away with the basic stuff just because I had some of the coordinations and movements that uh, just seemed like it felt comfortable to me. So yeah, it was at the start of, uh, yeah, starting at 14 years old. So it's well, been a while. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a, uh, playing an organ though, you actually have to have hand and eye and feet and coordination, right? Yeah. So that probably helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's possible, yeah, yeah. You just, uh, you just got rhythm in your blood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, as for your violin, uh, um, well, I started. I think I was seven when I started the piano, and I was so terrible at it, and I kind of hated it because I was so bad. And then oof. my father was taking violin, and uh, he would bring me with him. Um, we didn't have he didn't have a babysitter, so he would just bring me. And uh, I was uh, I was promised chocolate whenever I would behave. So you know. <laughs> I think there's a link. So after a while, uh, my father decided to um, let me take lessons and drop his, so so I could take lessons. So since eight years old, then. Daddy's girl, huh? Do anything for the for the daughter. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. Um. Yeah. So um. You guys um. Got any future good uh, albums in your future coming? Tours? What's going on for your future? Uh, so we've started working on our third album. Um, we're working on that this summer. We have uh, a few songs, uh, you know, in the works right now. Um, it's kind of hard to tell an exact date for the release, but we're aiming for somewhere in the first half of uh, 2019. Uh, 2019. For that. So, uh, yeah. So, and of it. course, because it requires a little bit more coordination, I guess, with our members, since everyone's kind of all over the place. Uh, what we've uh, started doing, um, actually last uh, album, and I think we may continue doing that, is uh, when uh, Steve comes in from California to record the bass in our studio, and Mark comes in as well, uh, we're, we're starting to look at the possibility of having uh, you know, uh, videos recorded during that time also, and just have everyone come here at the same time while we're doing the album, getting some of the videos done. So. It's a, a, a very hectic um, time because the, you know, the writing is just finished and now we're starting to record the official tracks and we're going right away into videos, which of course require a lot of preparation uh, due to the storylines, the venues, um, getting costumes uh, done, doing a lot of the research for the, uh, the history and all the details for the videos. But I think uh, what's really cool with that is uh, it, it is... Uh, a very challenging uh, amount of weeks, but at the same time, you get so much done during that amount of time that it keeps, it gives you material to release for a, you know, a very long time. So for example, uh, in May, 2017, we recorded the, uh, the videos for S Hope. We did Future Line. We did another video, which is not yet released. <laughs> and we did a bunch of playthroughs for bass, for guitar, for drums. And uh, we have a whole bunch of other stuff that's actually that was recorded around that same time. And we're just releasing them every few weeks. So we still have stuff to release for a while. So that's what's kind of really exciting to get that done all in, the, in about the same time frame. It's hard work, but you have a lot of material to work with for a long time after that. Uh, nice. After that statement, you just you, you like put a thousand questions in my head. Um, so what you're saying is when you guys are writing songs and everyone's all over America or wherever they're coming from, you guys have to send files. You write a file and then you send it to them and then you, you Steve or whatever because he's in California. Then he, he writes you back or, you know, or does he come and, and, you, and he's in his studio, he makes the music in his studio. How, how does this all work? Yeah, so usually, how, well, at least on the second album, how it worked, and I think we found a recipe now, and we'll, we'll likely continue going in that direction, which we have until now. Uh, so either I'll write some, uh, some drum ideas in terms of getting a, a song structure uh, put together, and uh, from beginning to end of just drums, and then either I'll give that to Julie and... Uh, and Mark and they'll come up with their parts. And then once they come up with their parts, uh, maybe we make some changes to the song structure or Julie will come up with uh, some melodies. And uh, at that point, either she'll give those melodies to me and I'll put the drums to it and Mark will put guitars to it. Uh, you know, we, usually what's worked was that kind of, um, you know, solution. 
And then once the songs are, are kind of well put uh, together and we feel that they're a place that, that are fairly complete, um, Steve will, will fly him in from California because he's often on tour uh, with, uh, with Testament and uh, Death uh, to All and other bands. Um, so uh, it, it's, uh, his schedule is a little bit more tricky to work with. So once the songwriting is done, we fly him in and uh, he learns the songs in the studio and he writes the, the bass parts uh, in the studio. We record them. And, and then we uh, have Aaron. Uh, then Aaron will come in and get the vocals uh, recorded. And Mark usually records his uh, guitars in Quebec because he's got the gear to do that. And when, um, you know, Steve is here uh, recording the bass, we'll have Mark come in to be able to get the videos recorded and all that. So that's what we're uh, looking at for the next album also. So it's a lot of coordination, but... Um, I really like our, our team members right now. It feels um, that the chemistry is really well, uh, that the chemistry is really good and the material we're happy with. So uh, we're continuing in that uh, direction. It's a little bit more coordination, but it's worth it. Good. <laughs> nice. sounds, sounds like a lot. Um, that goes, okay, all this that you just told us costs money. Now, this may be a little personal. Is it something that a producer or is doing for you or are you guys putting all this together with uh, your pockets? Yeah. Well, I'll take some of that question. So, um, so we fund the band, of course. Um, okay. yeah. So, but the fact that there's a lot of talent, I think from everybody in the, in the and different talents that are in, in every member, that's not really the good English way of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's my French here. <laughs> that's funny. So uh, every member has different uh, strengths. So um, if you take like um, the video as Hope Welcomes Death, the first one that you guys reacted to, um, um, I was in charge of the costumes, so we we didn't have to necessarily like have somebody like in charge of all of this. We didn't have to pay a costumer or uh, that would make or, or somebody that would make those costumes. So. I actually found all the pieces and and was in in charge also the props. So because I've done so much operas and stuff, so for me it's kind of something that's easy. Nice. Uh, Anik is is a genius at coordination. So um, he was able to put together a, a really really efficient schedule for uh, for everybody. Um, so that's a few things you know that if you if you can do it yourself, you're already saving a whole lot. Sure. So. And I think it's not only for the, the financial aspect, but if you do it yourself, you know what you want. So doing it yourself gives you the ability to get what you want. Yeah. And I think that is, is a, a, you know, a, a, I guess a big impact on how happy you are with the final result, you know? So a lot of the planning, a lot of the scheduling, a lot of the uh, concept ideas, um, we take care of, uh, you know, uh, the, the band members themselves. And of course we have help from a lot of people and when we're doing the videos of course uh thomas who has recorded uh those uh the, the two videos that are released now as hope and uh, our future line uh he brings his own um ideas and style uh and uh you know but basically it's all within the uh the group for the concepts and all the ideas in that so yeah beautiful all beautiful. right so uh last question yeah let's uh ask him uh, the final question yes all right let's go um, what do you have to say to people getting into the music industry? The uh, yeah, what like, would you say to your fans? What's one thing you give them advice? What's your advice? So for anybody who, who wants to be a musician, like to to enter that field, I would say find what is unique about you and exploit it, because that's what we want to see. You know, there's there's a lot of musicians out there, a lot of bands, and I think you really need to find out what is your thing, and really exploit that. And the other thing I would say is work, 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 work. A lot work, of work. work. <laughs> yeah, where hard work pays off. It's that that's just known fact. Yeah. But that's my classical side. You know, <laughs> we're crazy about practicing. Um, I guess for. Um, my recommendations or, or at least ideas for uh, people that are uh, starting a band and, and not only for people that are starting bands but uh, people that are in bands looking for um, you know um, changes in musicians or lineup changes 
I would say not only um, look for musicians within your home, you know, your, your hometown. I'd say think outside the box. With the internet nowadays, you can get a lot done at a distance. And uh, to, to me, uh, working with Mark, uh, the guitarist uh, who's uh, in Quebec City, that's actually close to a 20-hour drive from here or uh, several flights. And Steve, who's in California, I mean, we're not in the same hometown. It makes it a little bit more challenging, but if you like the style of a particular musician, I would say do not hesitate to contact them and try to work with them. Um, I've been uh, working with people that have hired me from, from Russia, from uh, Germany, you know, several countries in Europe and Canada, and with the internet, it, it makes things so much easier. So what I would suggest is don't only look in your hometown. I mean, the hometown is very important because that's your roots. Um, but when you're looking for musicians um, to make your dream band and make your dream music that you're going to put so much time, uh, effort, and money, think outside the box and, uh, you know, don't look at geography. Look at worldwide. <laughs> no, it makes sense because, um, you know, I was telling Jonathan that uh, I saw a post on the internet of you guys. Um, uh, my friend had posted a video of Steve. And I was like, oh, man, this guy's amazing. And then all of a sudden, it said he was in a band called Gone in April. So I checked you guys out. I couldn't freaking believe my ears. I told him about it. So then I, I contacted, uh, I guess it was Julie, through Facebook. And she wrote me back. And here we sit today. So you know my, what? The internet is a great thing. Yeah, my, yes. first, my first time listening to you guys was on camera. And once again, I know we have said this too many times. Yeah, <laughs> we're like fanboys. Yeah, you guys are absolutely <laughs> insane. That's super sweet. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know what? We uh, we got a lot of information out of you guys tonight, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And we thank you for just giving us your time. It means the world to us. Well, thank you for having us. All right, and beautiful. So, <laughs> yeah, this is great. We're gonna put it out on our page, and uh, you know, I hope you guys share it. And I hope one day, you know, if you guys come into Long Island, New York, you know, we could uh, be invited backstage and do a uh, a interview behind stage, you know, like real deal. Absolutely, so, that'd be sick. That would be amazing. So, uh, you know. All right. <laughs> so, without further ado, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us down in the comment section below what songs we should listen to because we take your requests. And press the subscribe button with the little bell next to it to get notified every time we upload a video. I'm Son. And I'm Father. And you guys? Gone in, Gone in April. April. See you later. Rock, Rock on. on.